guys and welcome to today's Los Blancos podcast. Today we'll be talking about pre-season and just a quick summary on everything that happened in pre-season. The good and the bad for Real Madrid ahead of the first La Liga game on Saturday against Athletic Club. Now, it was a mixed bag in pre-season. You know, two wins, two losses. Uh, first game we, we won 3-2 against AC Milan. Second game, we won 2-0 against uh, Manchester United. Then we went and lost 3-0 to Barcelona and then lost 3-1 to Juventus. So, you know, a varied range of results, I would say. And there was definitely some positives, definitely some negatives as well to take away. So let's start with some of the negatives. And I think we've got to talk about the defence because, you know, just like last season, I think the defence just continues to give up big, big chances away. And I think this is a huge, huge problem that I think we should have resolved, you know, Ancelotti should have resolved considering, you know, that's what Barcelona won the league on last year, you know, their defence. We should be, we should have been looking to improve that defence. We should have been looking to keep, keep those chances away from the keeper, you know, whether it had been Courtois or Lund, whoever it is in goal, you know, you have to keep away the chances. And the fact is that, you know, all that wasn't a high volume of chances that, you know, Barcelona or Juventus got, they both took their chances. That tells us that either either the, their finishing was amazing, which I don't think it particularly is, but I think it's more the fact that the chances that we do give up are very, very good ones. And so we should have been looking to get rid of those chances, looking to inhibit those chances. But at the end of the day, that's not what they've done. And this does worry me going into a season where we don't really have a striker so, you know, we're not going to be scoring that many goals. And now it looks like we haven't looked to to reduce the amount, the amount of goals that are conceded as well. So what are your thoughts on the, you know, the chance of being given up uh, defensively? Yeah, defensively, it's the same as you as last season, because last season we gave up a lot of silly chances, which started um, in the end of the season when we, even though you we were winning, you we guys conceding a, um, a goal and we were still winning. However, things um, just got a bit worse as the season went on. You know, um, it's a bit disappointing to see because um, this is a time when we don't have a striker and we don't want to be exposed on two sides. You know, um, I couldn't fancy that last year the attack was good, it's the defence. Now, without a striker, you know, you don't want to have issues in the attack and issues in defence. You know, we have a lot of solid defenders in terms of the centre positions and, of course, Garcia made the the back position better, so of course we have a lot of um of the defenders, and I hope that the the defensive issue is it's only due to the systematic um, change where the team isn't accustomed, you know, defending in the diamond or or defending in the new system. You know, I hope it's just that, and sooner or later they're going to be more accustomed to it. You know, actually, I did see that the diamond needs a bit of time. We did see that um that the issues will be fixed. You know, so hopefully um. Hopefully sooner um, we can just have some simple um, solutions to it, you know, because of course, as you can see with the, with the goals, um, it's a lot to do with um, positioning and of course marking, which is simple things, um, simple basics in football that needs to get done. However, if you're exposed, if you're struggling to adapt to something new, then you will have, you would face simple fundamental struggles, which is um, what we, what happened. Um, the goals against AC Milan, and Juventus, I would say, was a bit worse against Boston. I would say I got the exception of the goals because um, two goals, well, one goal was a strike from, from distance. One was a set piece, which they carved the super and it was a good set piece, I must admit. And the third one was um, when we were just attacking you know, to at least try and score a goal. You know, but however, I would hope that it's just down to... Uh, to this a simple system adjustment that the team is trying to be accustomed to. I hope it's just that, you know, because we do have solid defenders. Yeah, the next thing I do want to cite is the, the fullback issue because right now we've got one functioning fullback between the two flanks, and that's Frank Garcia. You know, it looks like Danny Carvajal. He may have regressed even further. Lucas Vasquez has regressed even further. You know, the pace that once made him, uh, you know, a solid fullback, a good right winger. I think that pace is gone now at this point. 
And so that leads to right back solution really, really weak. It will lead to the right back position really, really weak. And then you look at the left back position as well. Um, obviously, we've got Fran Garcia, who's really nice, but you know, he's still adjusting to a new team. And then Ferdinand Mendy is, is his fitness record. It looks like it's taken a toll on him. And you know, his pace is, it looks like it's declined, you know, and, and you know, his defending, it doesn't look as good as before. And you know, he's obviously got the injury now as well, so it looks like Fran Garcia is going to have to do the majority of the season, and it looks like maybe Camavinga is going to have to go back to being a left back again, which is not something that we want. So, especially in a in a in a diamond system where the fullback need to be up and down the whole game, it doesn't look like we're suited to that because of that, and I think we could really struggle offensively. Um, because of that, as well as defensively, because Carvajal is going to have to leave us in in positions that are going to be difficult for the defense to be, you know, adjusting to defending from. So it looks really bad for us. It doesn't look good that our fullbacks are really struggling at this current moment in time, and um, yeah, it could cause us huge issues if we come up against uh, a Rafael Leo and in the Champions League. You know, we could be in big, big trouble because Carvajal looks to have de declined a step further, and that's just. You know, from what he was last season, you know, when we were, you were saying like it was, uh, he he puts in a good game, bad game, but that that good game could now come every three games or four games now. He he looks like he's decreased a step further. So, you know, what are your thoughts on the fullback situation currently? Yeah, um, I'm not too sure what the club is, what they are not seeing. I'm not going to say what they're seeing, but what they are not seeing, because I'm sure they're seeing how um, good Garcia is doing when he's. Well, the, the first signs of Garcia, um, how effective it is to have a fullback who can get up the pitch. I'm not too sure what they're not seeing on the other side, if I'm being honest. Uh, I do hope it's because Ancelotti or maybe the club is thinking, you know what, we don't need two attacking fullbacks, maybe Garcia is enough. Um, but maybe we um, don't need another one on that side. But when Garcia wasn't playing and it was Mendy and Lucas Vasquez or Mendy and Carvajal, the attacking output was a disaster, in my opinion. It's it, it's putting a lot of um, pressure on the attack and the midfielders, you know, to, um, to help get chances into the box, to help do something, to help open space. And of course, like we always say, um, we've always said this, um, and not just us, but everyone says this, fullback is the, well, not is the most important position, but it's one of the most important positions in 2023 and in the modern game, where there's a lot of energy. You know, I, I would much prefer um, we play someone, you know, who isn't, you know, um, solid, but he gives you energy because at least he's going to help you open spaces, at least he's going to make the overlap and movement, at least he's going to do those things. And that's why I'm saying um, Vinicius Tobias, um, just give him a chance because of course, I know um, he isn't, let's say, um, a world beater or he, makes a, or he isn't the best at his age. But at least, you know, he's going to give you movement and at least he's skilled and at least he has good technique and at least he can put the ball in the box and he has um, willingness to, to push forward and that's what we need in my opinion. And that's why I've always been saying that um, in my post that the timeline couldn't, could you know um, fall into place for him if this season, this season, um, the fact that he got the opportunity to stay another year, um, the timeline could fall into place for him if I'm being honest. Uh, I hope it does, you know, because I think that's what, I think that's what is needed. A fullback who can go up and down. Maybe um, Valverde can be that guy, but you don't want to lose Valverde's goal scoring up and high up the pitch, which I don't want to lose. You know, he's not going to get the opportunity to shoot or to make those um, block, those um, runs into the box if he is um, playing as a fullback. So it could be an option, but you don't want to waste Valverde as a fullback. Similar to wasting Kamavinga as a fullback. It's going to work out because he's talented and because he has a lot of um, positive energy and positive um, traits to be a fullback. But you don't want to waste his talent and play as, play as a fullback. Yeah, I think we really have to look at maybe putting that job right back for the next season. I think out of the three, out of the other two we have, I think that should probably brings the most actually on in attack to be honest, and it's probably the most energetic out of the three. So. Nacho really has to be considered. Another a negative that we have to look at is the attack because 
you know, we knew the output was going to go down. You know, when you lose Benzema, it's obviously going to go down 30 goals a season just gone to Saudi Arabia. So, you know, that's going to go down. But it doesn't look good. You know, the last two games especially, you know, we, we shot 60 times in those last two games. And, you know, 10 of those were on target and we scored one goal. It just was not good productivity. We hit the crossbar, what, five times against Barcelona. It was it was really bad productivity from the attack. We couldn't score at all. You know, Mbappe's got us wrapped around his finger. You know, he can do whatever he wants. Right now, it it, it doesn't look good for us. And um, you know, in terms of in terms of the total productivity at from from us as well, it's just it it, it doesn't look good going into next season. You know. We were we were struggling at points in some games to score goals. You know, you remember that Mallorca game. Remember that Real Sociedad game from last year, where we created so many chances. You know, we lose Benzema now, and suddenly, you know, all the emphasis is now on Vinicius Junior, which means they're just gonna, you know, double up on Vinny every single game, maybe even triple up on Vinny every single game, and that does put a little bit more onus on on Rodrigo. But right now, it does not look good for the attack going into next season you know we haven't got worked out the diamond we haven't made it functioning as of yet so i'm i don't know i I really am i'm worried for next season i'm worried for the attack next season because it is looks like a situation where we can't attack we can't defend and that is not a good situation when you're playing football so yeah what are your thoughts on, on the on the goal scoring of the attack well, yeah, there's a lot of things that are um, contributing to it. Of course, you know, like you said, the amount of shots that we take compared to the how much we were on target or how much we scored. And there's also the, I think it was um, the amount of times we sent in a class and no one was able to meet it. I think the concerning part, let me start with the, the curse into the box. I believe that um, Bellingham at the moment, in terms of the starters, because Hoslu isn't starting. I believe Hoslu or Hoslu, I'm not too sure which one, which one is it, it is, but I think Bellingham is the only player, I believe, who is willing to try and get um, on to the end of these crosses. I think it's a weapon that we can use, however, if it's our only weapon when you're sending one into the box, then it just doesn't um, really make any sense because teams would figure it out and people would know that he is the only check because if a ball to go into the box, Vinicius and Rodrigo would at least have to be, you know, the ones at least making the ball to the person sending it in, or they may be um, jumping deep to try and help out. And when that happens, Bellingham is the only player there. And of course, Vinicius and Rodrigo isn't monsters in the air. They can score headers if they find space, and it's and um, well, they're not going to beat anyone in the air. And I think the only one who can do that is Bellingham. And if you um, if Bellingham is your only option to do that, then of course, as good as he is, he's not going to get the opportunity to do so because he's going to be marked off. You know, um, so it could be a weapon, but if it's your only weapon, then it's not going to work out no matter how skilled the player is or no matter how talented the player is. So that's one. Um, of course, in terms of getting the curse into the box, the only guy who does it consistently is um, Garcia. Lucas Vasquez had opportunities to do it, and it, either the final ball just wasn't good or either he, something something just made him, he made a mistake or something happened, you know, that um, so I'm not too sure exactly what it is. That's why um, I've been saying um, we need a fullback ASAP and as soon as possible, you know, because we need to, you know, constantly um, have, have guys dominating the flank, opening space for their teammates, and that's my biggest concern, more than an attacker, if I'm being honest one and another striker, you know. Uh, so that's one in terms of the both balls into the box and of course the chances we are missing. I would hope that uh, when the season comes maybe the the shipping boots can become a bit sharper because we did miss a lot of decent chances. But we do need a striker in my opinion and when we get Mbappe or somebody else next season or this season, you know, um, it's going to help Bellingham a lot and take out the pressure of him. Because yes, he would he can get goals from midfield. Yes, but where he can get goals from midfield. However, um, if it's your only option, I would say, and if it's one of your main options, then it's difficult to see it working out. You know, because they are um, talented players, but they are not like monsters 
uh, like as a striker. They're not they're not a striker. Their asset is key to like scoring goals coming from deep. You know, making those 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 um box and box movements or maybe finishing off the move by coming into space. You know, what part of it does so many times last season he just appears in space with an opportunity to shoot at the edge of the box, outside the box. You know, um, Bellingham he can get into the box and score. You know, um, he can make those um runs in behind. Uh, he can he can he can do that. But if it's your main option it's, it's gonna be difficult to work out. Um so so I hope, you know, that um, sooner or later we get Mbappe just to get it over with, get the saga over with, get the talking points over with, you know, just get all of that over with. It's important. We have to get that done. And of course, because we need goals. And of course, if we have Mbappe in the box, it's going to help Bellingham a lot in terms of his goal scoring as well. So I think signing Mbappe will help Benicia, so it'll help, it'll help the team on the whole. But I do hope if we sign Mbappe that um, our that well, not our that in the CS maybe he will have to do a lot more tracking back and work it a bit more harder now. So let's see what happens and I hope that um all of these things um uh, start clicking together soon. Yeah, um but let's let's move on to some positives because I think we did cover most of the negatives. I think let's move on to some positives and there were some positives. The fact is we were creating chances and I think a large part of that is to due to Jude Bellingham. I think he was really nice, like you mentioned. You know, he was really good releasing the pressure on us. You know, he was he was making really nice dribbles, you know, br- moving the ball very nicely, very crisply. It looked really, really sharp. And um with our concerns about his injury record but He's okay now, I think, and you know, we're, we looked really nice for Jude Bellingham. And then, obviously, the next one I would I would like to discuss also is Shuameni. I think Shuameni was really impressive also in in preseason. You know, he, he I think he he has to make uh, the step up this season. I think that it is time for him to make a step up. You know, he isn't as young as what Kamavinga was, so you know, I don't think the development plan should be similar. But I think. Um, yeah, it, this is his season to shine now. I think, you know, Cruz and Modric are going to take the back, back seat here now. So I think he has to step up this season. And I think if he steps up, I think the defence automatically um, makes, uh, makes a step up also. not Maybe not enough to, for us to win the league on its own just by Shuameni stepping up. But I think it does massively help. So those two I thought were really nice this season and this preseason. What are your thoughts on them? Let me start with Adam Bellingham, of course, because he's a new signing. Um, it's going to be a lot of um, pressure for him to perform. And of course, you can see how difficult the media can be, especially on Mason Mount and Kai Havertz in um, this season. So it's good to see Ed Bellingham escape that. That's important. You know, uh, it's good to see him start with some confidence. You know, that's important when you're going into the season. I'm, I'm really happy to see that. You know, um, so that's one. Natalie is one. And of course, he is, he is the one who's going to make everything work if you're playing in a diamond. He is the guy, if it's, if you're playing 4-3-3 or 4-4-2, whatever we're playing, he's going to be so important. And it's now close to saying that he could be our best midfielder um, at the moment. And, and I hope that he is, because of that means he's taken a step forward. Um, I think um, true many, like he said, um, his defensive output would be would be amazing to be honest. It's definitely something we need. And yes, he's gonna help the defense. That's a big that's a big plus, that's a big positive. Um, we did mention the mistakes that the defense makes, but let let me just say that I must admit that all of these defenders have a lot of uh, center box to be specific, has a lot of physical attributes to dominate an, an attack an attacker. It's just Sometimes we just leave them exposed and do the marking and silly mistakes. But in terms of man marking, dominating play, speed, to recover, they all have that. And that's something that that um, we should be happy about. So um, that's one um, true of many. I'm seeing that Ancelotti, hopefully he has willingness to play the young midfielders. And that's one. And that's, that's something important. You know, um, so the fullback fan Garcia, he, he got fouled a lot of times and, and that's something we always wanted. He wasn't able to to accurately send balls into the box because of the numbers we had there or because no one was there um, to, for him to hit balls into. But of course he was the second most successful 
in terms of um, curses last year in La Liga. So that's so the more the season goes in, the more he's going to understand his teammates, and the more things will get better. You know, um, so that's good. Um, of course, um, it's not happening on the other side yet, but of course, it's good to see it on one side. And I hope um, the thinking is that. Maybe if you have one attack and full back, you don't need another, another attack and full back. And maybe the other guy, um, Kabaha, Lucas, Nacho, Melita, whoever plays there, can maybe hold full back a bit and depend on Valverde really doing a lot of the full back duties as a midfielder on that side, which is what has been happening for a while now. So hopefully that can happen. Um, I'm happy to see women getting two games. That's good. Um, Kotoa um, making some decent saves, that's good. Uh, Kamavinga playing, like I said, the young midfield, they're getting the opportunities to play, and that's a positive. And of course, in terms of the attack, Benicia scored two, Rodrigo. I hope he maybe finds his finishing boots a bit now because um, he did get himself into good positions and have a good link, good link up, you know, but he isn't um, He didn't score, which is. which. Is a bit of a bummer, but of course, you know, it's it's still, you know, sharpening, sharpening the knives a bit. So hopefully, um, he starts scoring, but he does look a bit sharp, which is good. But Vinicius, um, of course, scores too. He's getting accustomed to a new position, but he is still scoring and still being dangerous, which is what, which is which is a positive. I liked how he has played in this first game with Bellingham against AC Milan, which was a positive. Uh, I like the host of score. I like how he is getting, the, no matter the, I don't care if he miss a lot of chances, he's getting there. You know, and that's something that I wanted with Jovic, because when Jovic missed a lot of chances, at least he was playing, and he just stopped playing, and then he, he wasn't even a threat anymore. You know, but at least I want to show, if you remember when Jovic um, started, he would be getting those cameos, and he would just be getting chances, and he would just be missing, and he was still getting it into the box and at least attacking the balls. And that's why I had so much faith in him, because at least he was attacking the balls and having confidence to do so. And then as time progressed, he barely played and he, he, he just didn't have the confidence to do that anymore. But with you, which we did say that eventually one of those chances will go in and eventually one did go in, you know, for him. You know, but of course he never had the continue, continuity, his confidence once low and he just never attacked the box or like he used to um we tried to play like Benzema which wasn't um, um effective at all but with Ozolo at least he's getting into the box at least he is there and sooner or later um he's he's a guy who's maybe going to score a little winner for similar to what Dupe Young did for Barcelona not to show um if you um remember those days when Dupe Young would just score a little goal for Barcelona score some header when the team wasn't playing well, so that's a weapon we can have, and it's for one season. So hopefully he can he can score and do well for us. He's going to work out, which is good. He has a, he can do well in, in the air, and hopefully that can help with Garcia and Kava can send more into the box, but he isn't fit as he used to be, so that's a bit concerning. But yeah, that's the positives for me. Um, Nico Paz got some minutes. Um, that's it really. Um, hopefully, I wish Rodriguez could have been there to play some minutes, and I also wish that Gula was there to play some minutes. But unfortunately, one wasn't called up, one was injured, and um, we we'll see as the season goes by. Yeah, and I think he is going to have to call up uh, Alvaro by the end of the season if the goals do not, you know, do not come. But um, yeah, I think it is important to stress how preseason is not representative of the actual season. Like we. You know, I've mentioned this before, but, you know, we've previously had horrible pre-seasons and then we go on to win La Liga, go on to win the Champions League. So it really does not matter what happens in pre-season. You know, these are just some takeaways we can take from pre-season. I think these are the main takeaways. But I think a lot of this we didn't know before, you know, the the goals and the, the defence, we knew that before, uh, you know, before pre-season that this was going to be an issue. And, you know, it is a bit annoying that he hasn't addressed this, you know, Ancelotti hasn't addressed this, but what can you do, hey? We've got the Saturday, we've got the Athletic Club coming up. Um, you know, hopefully we can start La Liga off in the right way, but um, you never know. Um, you know, next season's going to be 
going to be exciting. Um, Hopefully, you know, maybe Mbappe comes as well, which makes it even better. But you never know with Mbappe these days. You know, you don't listen to anything until until we get a David Ornstein or a Fabrizio Romano. I'm not getting excited. But uh, that is it for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.